It is time okay. for it is time for uh, the Berkshire Edge on air. You can find the Berkshire Edge uh, online, of course, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, mm-hmm. providing news information and uh, community account events and more. Uh, they also have a magazine, but the Berkshire Edge dot com is the location that you can find them twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. And good morning to both of you, uh, spread throughout the country. <laughs> Spread throughout the spread spread throughout the northeast at least. Okay. All <laughs> yeah. right. Well, let us. Uh, I'm in the Big Apple. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with being in the Big Apple. Uh, it, uh, it's a uh, it's. Uh, David Tarachuk joins us every week, and if he's not in the Big Apple, then he's all over the world. But uh, it's nice to have you two <laughs> together, uh, together apart. All right, let's start off with the the first uh, uh, story that's on top for uh, this morning, and that is. What do you know? Boston acknowledges the western county of Massachusetts. Great Barrington will receive $2.1 million in COVID relief funds. And state auditors now acknowledge the state's east-west divide. Well, you yeah. know, Great Barrington, you know, <laughs> is on the other side of the Taconic Range from um, uh, the Berkshire Mountains from Boston. And... Uh, the, the the people in western Massachusetts, sometimes this far west, anyways, sometimes feel like they're invisible to 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 Boston, um, uh, and uh, but not this time. We we are uh, we're getting two point one million dollars in in COVID relief funds, according to the state uh, auditor, who acknowledged. Can you believe it? The east west divide in this state. <laughs> You know? I mean, we, uh, well, listen, there have been times, in fact, we have written stories from time to time, people will periodically realize that Boston is ignoring them, and so they say, well, why don't we just secede as a, as a county, and we can either join Vermont, or, uh, well, that's what the solution is, that we join Vermont. Well, you know, Vermont would then extend all the way down to the border of Vermont would extend down to Connecticut. What's interesting about uh, about what problem you have is we get, we have the same problem here in Northwest Connecticut. Most people in Connecticut think think that uh, Connecticut ends at Torrington. They forget about the rest of Connecticut, <laughs> and for it our does. and our I thought it did. and our friends in in eastern in in uh, eastern Dutchess County, a lot of people think that New York ends at the Hudson River, and they. Right. <laughs> so, so our areas all have that problem. But I think, you know, I know in our area, the COVID funds that come into the towns, Sharon was yeah. the first town to do this. Sharon uh, is, is allowing the town to participate uh, uh, in how those funds are spent, where they're going to have a meeting. And it's not yeah. just going to it's not just going to be up to the Board of Selectmen or, or the Board of Finance. Uh, is, is Great Barrington doing the same thing? Well, they, they oh. haven't. Just, that's the question. What to do with this windfall? And uh, uh, they're going to uh, address. Of course, they have they have issues that they have to address, yeah. I- I- including a public health impact uh, on on the county. And um, so there's a number of there, there's a, there's a number of areas where they're going to have to uh, spend this money. But it's not. Um, it's it's not exactly you know free. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's, it it came out of somebody's pocket. <laughs> it does. And, well, and um, also you know it seems like a huge amount of money, but it's not. I can't. Tell. I mean, I don't know whether you know whether it is. I mean, you know, I mean, it seems like a huge amount of money. It's probably more. It's more than is it more than the uh, Great Barrington annual town budget. Um, well. Here, no, no. Uh, the no. annual town budget is far more than that. But the, yeah, the point right. is that um, the, they're going to have a uh, community meeting yeah. to seek input from the public uh, mm. for ideas about how to, how to address this uh, windfall. Well, um, that's a which sm- is, yeah, that's which sm- is the way you know, yeah. to do it because you know, we are in the town meeting form of government, yeah. uh, which you know, we meet each spring and... The, the town meeting itself, which is, you know, all the citizens can attend, uh, all the voters can attend, um, uh, determines where each month, I mean, each year, the, 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 tax, the town's tax money is spent. So it's, um, you know, it's, the selectmen in our, in, in our form of 
town meeting form of government are, is merely the agents of the of the town meeting. That's exactly like that. that's yeah. exactly right. The board of finance and uh, our right. selectmen uh, are the ones that yeah. put things together, but then the ones that decide in town meeting government, and this is why right. it's so important for people to participate, are the people at the town meeting. Right, right. and it's a, that's a very democratic way to do it. It's a, it's a, a very old-fashioned New England way to do yeah. it, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, but it's 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 very participatory, and um, but uh, I people wouldn't feel very involved in their own their own town government. So, um, and but you know, the shocking thing is how few people actually attend. Yeah, yeah, you know, no, that's I, true. I mean, we had you know. I mean, maybe did we have a thousand people? I mean, we had. Oh, not, a, I mean, no, not so many. No, no, no. We had. Uh, I mean, I, I'm I'm sorry, but I I know that it was a small percentage of the number of uh, um, eligible people who could have come to. Well, lately, of up. course, because of COVID, we've had to yeah. hold. We can't hold it in the school auditorium. So we have a kind no, of. we've had them in the parking lot. Of the we've had, had the parking lot of the high school. Um, right. and people are in their cars listening to the radio, <laughs> where it's broadcasted. That's how listening it, to that's the meeting it, on the radio. Right? Yeah, <laughs> me, listening to the meeting, right? Well, right. it's 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 great to see that uh, these towns are lining up like this and allowing uh, the the. Uh, the uh, the people to be involved beforehand, and 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 yeah. your next story goes with uh, your state representative uh, uh, William Pignatelli uh, calling for equity in the distribution of funds for infrastructure. Yes. Well, well listen, you know. Can you imagine? Um, <laughs> j- just you know, um, just as an example of how we're treated. Within the last year, there were big announcements that they were going, or the last couple of years, there were big announcements they are going to increase east-west train service across Massachusetts. Of course, the, the furthest west was Springfield. So they were talking <laughs> about train service between Boston and Springfield. Now, we are west of Springfield, <laughs> and it's as if we didn't exist. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 well, we're on the other side of the mountains, you know, and Boston yeah, just can't right. see it. But there are train tracks. <laughs> well, it, so, it's the so same. It, you know, it's funny so because the more we look at these problems, the, the, we see how our areas are related because it's the same thing here in northwest Connecticut yeah, and, and eastern yeah. New York. But, but you know what? It's good when you have, and I know some people are going to say, oh, I'm, getting, well, I'm not getting political here, but it's good when you have somebody who's your representative that's been around and has some name recognition uh, in Boston uh, to be out there fighting right. the fight for you. Yes, and we, well, we are Smith, very lucky. Smitty's very good, Smitty, yeah. We have, Smitty we have, Pignatelli. He is yeah, brilliant, yeah. but everybody calls him Smitty. And he's been, a, yeah. he's been I don't know, I mean, it, it, it's at least 20 he's years for, that he's been. Yeah, he's yeah. been our rep. And, right. uh, he, but we may uh, be losing, we're losing, a, um, uh, you know, because, after, because of the census. Yeah. We're, we're losing uh, probably a state senator. Um, in Western Massachusetts, and no, not a state right. senator. We, uh, the state senators yeah, are assigned. Yeah. I mean, each county, but uh, we're losing a rep. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. so I thought we were losing so, a senator. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's go on to speaking about politicians uh, and stuff. Uh, the uh, the great parent, <laughs> yeah, the great Parrington Select Board. I, I'll tell you what. Between the bridges and the Housatonic Waterworks, I don't know if I would want to oh. be a select person. <laughs> Oh, I know, I know. These are insurmountable problems. You know, I see the pictures, and people are really starting to revolt. I see pictures now on a daily basis on Facebook from people that are fed up with the water, and they're putting the pictures of the water right out on Facebook. Good. Yeah, well, Good we've been them. having them on. We the, did that we, too. We've been yeah. putting them on the edge for you know for years now. I mean, we have one today. Well, um, what the, this is a what, what this issue is is a is a chronic issue for this the little uh, village of Housatonic, which is part of the town of Great Barrington, and they had uh, their own. It's a relic of the past when when uh, water systems were privately owned. But they still have a privately owned water system, and <laughs> it doesn't. It's uh, it doesn't generate enough money actually to maintain itself, and they have. Uh, 
um, it, it, it's it's owned by a guy named J- Jim Mercer, whose family has owned the Housatonic Water Works, so-called, uh, for generations. And the question is what to do with this, how, how to maintain this water system, this privately owned water system. <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's a relic of the past, in a way. You know, sooner, um, sooner or later... So including the name. I mean, I love this. Housatonic right. Water Works. It's sort of like a stop on the Monopoly board. I was going to say, but, you know, <laughs> sooner, sooner or later, sooner or later, somebody's, somebody or people are going to get together and they're going to sue. And there's only really two options. Either the town takes it over or someone comes up with money so people can drill their own wells. But it, it's sooner or later, it's got to come to a head because I can see the residents are just totally, at this point, frustrated beyond belief. Oh, can well, you imagine I, you know, this, this, living in a house where you can't drink the water? Yeah. I mean, you, the water is just disgusting. I mean, people but, are dependent you know, on bottled water in their own homes. This is a, uh, uh, I know when I first came to New England as a, as a reporter uh, in Bennington, Vermont, they had, a, it was exactly the same issue. The village uh, of Bennington had uh, uh, a private water system. And uh, they had a what was called a deed of gift, and it was it was it, the town had to spend years and years and years and lots of money and legal fees to try to, to disassemble that so-called deed of gift that uh, made the made the uh, uh, water system privately owned and uh, without the funds to actually maintain itself. So it's the same. It's the same situation here with the Housatonic Water Works, which is, a, you know, a privately owned uh, uh, system. You know, here in Northwest Connecticut, Salisbury has Aquarian in here, and Falls Village. Aquarian, just, right? And Falls Village right. voted to change uh, to uh, to have Aquarian come in and take over their water company. Sharon, uh, right now, has its own water company. But I would think sooner or later, in the next ten years. Uh, as as rules change, as 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 it costs more and more, that most of these companies uh, that now are left will be will be purchased by other companies that can afford to to bring safe and uh, and great water into communities. I I I don't see it changing in the future unless uh, unless people really start acting up. And I feel sorry for the people in Housatonic because. Not even you can't drink the water, but you don't feel great showering it's it or anything. Right? Who's going to yeah. get washing your hair? Yeah. You know. Who's going to get in a bathtub for the since it fills up? Right. It's brown. Now, when you take a shower, it's a little different, but still, you you know what's yeah. there. So I, it's going to be interesting to follow that over the course of the next couple of months. Yeah, it is, and, and it's a rel- It really is a relic of. of yeah. Past, you know, it, it can't. It can't be allowed to continue. It can't. It just can't. <laughs> I mean, well, the, the, oh, the no, question right, is right. that's the way I feel. And I don't. Even, I, I mean, don't even, there is no private firm yeah. that's going to come in and take no. this over. I mean, you know, it, it, it's too it, small. You know, the town it, is too it's small. not sustainable. Right. Um, I, I, if so, I feel, if you know if I feel this way, I can imagine how the residents there feel. I just oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Well, I want to go to something no, different. I want to go to something yeah. different because you've got – we covered uh, two rallies over the weekend, one in Kent, which had about, oh, about three to 500 people in it, and one in Salisbury, which had about three to 400 people in it, and that is uh, the rally in Salisbury and Kent in support of women's rights. Right. right. Uh, we, we had a story about covering this rally uh, to defend abortion rights and, um, uh, you know, in, in opposing this uh, – Texas law, which prohibits uh, which prohibits abortion, so this is a national issue. And, uh, but hopefully, sending a message to the Supreme Court when they start to uh, rule on on some of these laws that you know that that seems like almost a hopeless cause. It's it's um, it, it's it's such an important issue, and it and it's and they used to call it a swing issue. It's no longer a swing issue. It is a hammer issue now. Now that yeah. uh, over the pa- no over the past eight years, the Republicans managed yeah. to get themselves a couple extra seats that really they shouldn't have had on the Supreme Court. But what's done is done. It wasn't illegal. It was unethical. Right. But uh, and right. I'll never forget what a Barack Obama elections have consequences, and these are the yeah. consequences we're facing right now uh, as 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 individuals across the country. Right. Well, yes, and, and, uh, and, 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 but, but but it is the way. You know, many of the voters wanted it. Although, although actually, you know, the um, support for abortion 
um, has the majority of the American population. I mean, it just doesn't have the support you know, in the, the, jury, in the, gerrymander, the uh, in the gerrymandered district. Abortion, yeah. which I refuse yeah. to call pro-life, yeah. because uh, you know what kind of a life are they in favor of? I mean, you know, for, for babies to be born to parents who either can't afford them or you know babies who are you know hardly viable and. You know, um, you know, it's it's a terrible burden, and, and no one is, uh, nobody who's opposed to abortion is allocating money to take care of these children. I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, I, I would, I would understand this compassion for the for the unborn, if uh, you know, social policy were providing for them, you know, for after they're born. I mean, then I could say, well, this is a humanitarian effort, but. Right now, you know, it just puts the burdens on the on the mothers who you know who can't afford it, or e- either emotionally or or financially to begin with, and uh, now they're being forced to have children that they can't deal with and whom they can't raise appropriately, and no one is coming to help them after the birth. It's you know, it's only before the birth that everybody is concerned or just, about the you know the life of this baby. Just remember this: that uh, there's a majority of people that uh, that voted for Joe Biden. There's a majority of people that 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 want abortions and the women's right to, to choose. But uh, because Republicans, Democrats, for years have been gerrymandering districts, and the Republicans right. have been very yeah. good at it, gerrymandered districts rules the day. Uh, and yes. and and that's that you know there's a whole slew of problems that that this country faces as a country and it's going to be very interesting to see uh well it's going to be yeah i'm sorry i didn't no yeah. it's, it's going to be interesting to see if 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 people's will can can prevail that's all it's, you know it's it's very hard to look at any other way uh, <laughs> yeah. uh yeah. because if you leave it up to the, if you leave it up to washington uh nothing's going to change right now I want to move on to the final two stories. The Community Development Corporation in South Berkshire, uh, a fundraiser for affordable housing, uh, and they're showing the film Citizen Jane. Oh, yeah. So this is about Jane Jacobs. Um, You know, I don't know if many of your listeners know who Jane Jacobs was, but she was, I think, a housewife in... uh, yeah. in Greenwich Village in New York, who started a movement to fight against uh, the village being cut in half by a road, which, um, what's his name? Um, Robert Moses. The power broker, Robert Moses, had proposed. Right. Um, and yeah. uh, she won. I mean, he wanted, you know, Robert Moses was the great road builder, among other things, and uh, he wanted to cut a road right through the community of Greenwich Village, as he was able to do through the, you know, through the community of, of in the communities in the South Bronx, and destroyed the communities. Um, she was determined that he not destroy the village, and she won. And she wrote a seminal book called "The Life and Death of Great American Cities." I think it was written in the '60s, and. Uh, um, so this is a film about what makes a, a yeah. viable community. You know, this. You know, if you if you look at the George Washington Bridge, before the George Washington Bridge, and when they put that in, they separated many communities and totally changed the outlook of that portion of New York when they put the highway in to feed the George Washington Bridge. A lot of people right. uh, forget about the time when uh, community development was to raise the old and just to put in new. Uh, and right. uh, and not recognize the importance of having a community or the old community. And if you put uh, eight lanes of highway in between two sections of the community, you make it harder for that community to act as an individual community. It's just right. uh, yeah. true. Well, and and but these roads, uh, you know, uh, serve to further uh, you know isolate people because yeah. you know uh, public transportation is it, it builds communities and. The automobile, um, you know, seems to separate them. Well, it it happened in Kingston, New York years ago. Uh, Kingston had a viable uh, downtown, Broadway, and everything like that, and uptown. And and then someone came up with the idea, let's put a bypass in so people can get around Kingston much quicker and go (laughs) north. And really, it was the death knoll for the downtown and the midtown area, which is now recovering, by the way. But really, what seemed like what was a great idea turned out to be a very, very bad idea. 
right. which which cost a lot of businesses uh, their business. Well, final story, mm-hmm. and we're going to have a a, a a good final story, and that is celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day, October yes. 11th. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, well, yes, this is the replacement for Columbus Day. Or, <laughs> Um, right, renaming the Indigenous Columbus Peoples Day. Day. Right. Pardon? Re- renaming it, right. Renaming it, right. Well, it's... refocusing its attention. Um, right. And, uh, well, there's been that old, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the Indigenous Peoples of, of Western Massachusetts had their land kind of taken away from them years ago, and, and uh, uh, the... There's been, uh, you know, since then, uh, there have still been people uh, who have remembered that, uh, that theft, you might say. And um, uh, so there's a, been an active, uh, you know, uh, indigenous peoples movement here in western Massachusetts. And um, uh, so it's, it's, this is a, a day to kind of honor that. Uh, that legacy of this area, and you know what I find right. interesting, people, yeah. people oh. that people that are, ahead, that people are against it, is people people can still celebrate if they want to. Uh, Christopher Columbus, I mean, that's their right as Italians, and that's their people. But also, you recognize exactly the full history of the country by by having a day like right. this right. as well. That's, you know, right. I know it, it, to a lot of people it seems foolish, but it's not. I mean, you're not you're not saying Italians can't celebrate Christopher Columbus coming over here. You're just saying that there's a lot of other people that make up this country and make the country what it is. Right. That's, that's right. right. And uh, you know, these people were not waiting to be discovered. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> sort of like, yes, yeah, they weren't they waiting signs like, on 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 Cape Cod saying, <laughs> "Discover us, discover us." Right. They just Discover us, right. Don't, you know, don't go by. Don't go by. Here we are. <laughs> right. Damn, you know, where is... Yeah. I can see the we damn... Until you discover us, we do not exist, damn, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where's, the, where's the Nina, the Pinta, and Santa Maria? We're waiting here for it over here. In- <laughs> yeah, right, exactly, because we don't exist until you discover us. Uh, All meanwhile, right. they were living perfectly fine, right. <laughs> perfectly well. Well, these stories and many, many more every day, 24 <laughs> hours a day at the BerkshireEdge.com, also in their magazine with segment where which comes out, and guys... Is, uh, count, the yeah. magazine will come out uh, the next issue of the first week in November. All right. Well, I think this worked November. out pretty good for being in two different locations. So Yeah. <laughs> we can still talk. <laughs> All right, guys. We will speak to you next week. All okay, right. Bye. Okay, Marshall. Have a good Bye-bye. week. All right. Take care. You bet. Bye. Uh, that is the uh, the Berkshire Edge on air. Once again, you can find them at the BerkshireEdge.com.